Welcome to Hovercraft Physics and Chemistry. This is part two of a tutorial on how to use the Google Sheets trendline tool to develop mathematical models for sets of data. The previous video used a linear trendline. Here we'll use a quadratic trendline for the mathematical model. Here's the sample data that we'll analyze, as in part one of the video. This is hypothetical data for a car slowing down, and this data represents the total distance traveled as measured every two seconds. Like in the first video, we're not going to assume this data to be perfect. It's going to have some measurement error, and that's okay. Here's the spreadsheet from part one of the tutorial. I'm going to update the title to include this distance data. Before, we just looked at time and speed. If you have related data sets, rather than creating an entirely new spreadsheet, I like to add a tab. If you click on the plus sign down in the lower left corner, you'll get a new sheet. The data in sheet one is still there, but we have a fresh spreadsheet to work with here. You can even rename those. I'll go ahead and do that. Here's the sample data that we'll work with. Our next step would be to type the values into the spreadsheet. Again, we want to think about the independent and the dependent variable. In this data set, the times were chosen first, so it's the independent variable. It needs to go in column A. If I want to force the data to have one decimal place, I can highlight the numbers and click the Increase Decimal Places button. With that done, I'll go ahead and type in the distance values. Let me increase the font size a little bit. And now that we have the data entered, I'll delete this image. To graph the data, we highlight all of the values and the headings and go to Insert, Chart, or click here in the toolbar. This time, Google Sheets recommends a scatter chart or a scatter plot, and that's exactly what we want. Again, we want to avoid a dot-to-dot -dot type graph. It's correctly pulled in time as the x-axis variable and distance as the y-axis variable. To add a trend line, we go to Customize in the Series tab. You have to scroll down to find the checkbox for trend line. I'll go ahead and click it. Notice that by default, Google Sheets will put a linear trend line on the data. Now you might look at this and say, that trend line does fit the data in an acceptable way. It makes sense that a curve might fit the data even better. Let me remove the trend line for a second and take a look at that. If I were to imagine a curve through the data points, I see that it fits a parabolic curve. You could imagine that the parabola would continue over here and we would have a downward opening parabola. Also, if you know some physics, when an object is accelerating, the distance or position graph will be parabolic. So I have a little bit of background knowledge to know that this graph should be parabolic or fit a quadratic relationship. To get back in and customize the graph, click the three dots for the menu. I'll go to Edit Chart, and I want to go to Customize in Series to add the trend line. We've already seen that a linear trend line wasn't a great fit. If I think it's quadratic, I need to change the type of trend line. You might be tempted to pick exponential, but that's not what we want here. That's a base raised to the x power. We want polynomial. A quadratic relationship would be a second order polynomial. When I click on polynomial, I do have the option to change the degree, but if I think it's a parabolic or quadratic relationship, second degree polynomial is my best choice. I can see in the graph that the trend line does in fact fit the data points pretty well. It's a big improvement to a linear trend line. At this point, I'd like to see the equation of the line and do some analysis. So for label, I choose use equation, and the equation is inserted above the graph. Let me make it a little bit bigger so that we can do some analysis. Again, one of the things I dislike about Google Sheets is that it's giving me an equation in the form of y equals this string of numbers and symbols. So let me go ahead and type that in. Being more complex, a quadratic relationship is going to have more terms, 
we'll need to do some thinking about what all these terms mean. You likely learned in math class that the general equation for a parabola, or a quadratic relationship, is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. I wish Google Sheets would present the equation in this form, but they don't. Instead, it's inverted. The ax squared term here is actually listed third. The bx term is in the middle, as we would expect, and the c term is listed first. Let me take a moment to write it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. That looks better, but we still need to make sense of this equation. One of the easiest things to do is replace y with the variable being measured on the y-axis. In other words, distance. Wherever I see x in the equation, it's referring to time, because time is measured on the x-axis in this case. Let me go ahead and replace those. My next step would be to determine what unit should be attached to each of the numerical quantities in the equation. It's a little bit harder than with a linear equation, but we can still try to figure things out. Let's first look at the c term. Here it's negative 0.25. That actually represents where the graph starts. The first data point was exactly at zero meters, but the trend line doesn't go exactly through that point. We wouldn't expect that for real data anyway. But based on the data set, we know that the intercept really should be zero. And it's okay in such cases to actually delete the intercept from the equation. If you're not sure whether or not to keep the intercept value, I use something called the 5% rule. If the intercept value from the trend line is less than 5% of your largest y-axis measurement, you can assume that it's actually zero, and you can drop it from the equation. My largest y-axis value was 44 meters. 0 0.25 is less than 5% of 44. So again, just by the eyeball check and the 5% rule, I'm going to delete that term from the equation and assume that the graph starts at zero. That leaves me with two coefficients to consider, the a coefficient and the b coefficient. Let's start with the b coefficient because it's a little bit simpler. I need this equation to work out so that I get a distance in meters. I would plug in a time in seconds, multiply it by the coefficient, and units should cancel in such a way to give me meters. So some unit times seconds needs to equal meters. The correct unit is meters per second. In other words, if I took a seconds value and multiplied it by 8.92 meters over seconds, seconds would cancel and would give me a value in meters, which is what I want. Also, if you know some physics, you might recognize that this term in the equation represents the initial velocity of the object. Velocity is measured in meters per second. One last adjustment would be to make the coefficient match the data in terms of significant figures. Most of my data points have two significant figures. So I'm going to go ahead and round that to 8.9. That leaves me with the a coefficient. It's attached to time squared. Using the same argument as before, the coefficient, when multiplied by a time value squared, should equal meters. In other words, I need seconds squared to cancel when I multiply it by the coefficient. By that argument, the units here should be meters per second squared. And I'll go ahead and round that to two significant digits as well. One last thing I can do to clean up the equation is use superscript 2 for my squared terms. There's not an easy way to do that in Google Sheets, but what you can do is open up a Google Doc. Once you're in Google Docs, you can go to Insert, Special Characters, and search for superscript 2. I have the various superscripts over here. I could use those if needed, but I'll click on superscript 2, and it inserts it into the Google Doc. Then I'll just go ahead and highlight and copy the superscript 2 into the Google Sheet. Another great tip if you use a lot of special characters is to store them in Google Keep as a note. I've created a note with all the superscripts that I might commonly use, and the subscripts as well. One of the nice features of Google Keep is that it's accessible across all of the Google Drive apps. So I can click on it here and copy and paste any of those superscripts or subscripts that I need.
In this case, I want to replace caret 2 with superscript 2, here and here. That really helps the final equation be a little bit more polished and readable. But we still need to make sense of this coefficient, negative 0 0.45. You might guess that this first coefficient is related to acceleration because of the units. Meters per second squared is a unit of acceleration. It turns out that it's not the acceleration of the car, but it's half the acceleration of the car. The explanation for that is a topic for another video. But it should make sense that the value is negative. The car is slowing down, so it has a negative acceleration. From math, you might also know that if this term is negative, you have a downward opening parabola. I hope this video has helped you learn how to fit a quadratic trend line to a data set. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I'd also appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel. As always, thanks for watching.